May I proceed? Good morning, Dr. Sachenko. Good morning. I want to start by talking about something I think you and I can both agree on. Now, you know what confirmation bias is, right? I've heard the term, of course. As a social scientist, you know that confirmation bias is where a person comes to the evidence with preconceived notions, right? That's true, yes. And the person is likely to read that evidence in light of those assumptions, right? That is what confirmation bias is, yes. And if a person has confirmation bias, they're going to have the same conclusion at the end that they did at the beginning, right? Like all biases, confirmation bias can be overcome. So I'm not asking about whether or not it can be overcome. I'm just asking about what happens during confirmation bias. Objection, Your Honor. This goes outside the scope of the witness's expertise for Central Rule 702. He's not a social scientist. He's an expert in aeronautical engineering. Talking about an attack on credibility. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. So asking you the question again about confirmation bias. If a person has confirmation bias, they're likely to see the evidence at the end as the same as their original conclusion, right? Likely, I don't know. Again, I am an aeronautics and astronautics engineer. Uh, possible, certainly. So are you saying you've never heard the term confirmation bias before? I have. I'm not sure about the specifics. I'm not a social scientist or a psychologist. All right, let's talk about whether or not you approach this evidence with a fresh perspective. Now, you used to work in the Air Force, right? I was, yes. And you were injured in a plane crash, isn't that right? That is true, yes. Because of those injuries, you were honorably discharged from the Air Force, true? That is correct. In that plane crash, your best friend didn't make it out alive, right? Unfortunately so, yes. Doctor, this plane crash that took your best friend's life and got you honorably discharged from the Air Force, you believe that the pilot was scud running, and that's why that plane crashed, isn't that right? That's correct, yes. Now bracket that off for a moment. Now when you first heard about this case, you heard about it from watching it on the news, true? I did, yes. The reporter played exhibit two that you just played for the members of the jury, right? The brief mayday call? That's correct, yes. Sir, just from listening to that mayday call alone, you believe that the pilot was scud running, isn't that right? I did not come to my conclusion at that time. I reviewed several evidence, uh, and based on my expertise in education, it was only at that point, after reviewing the evidence, that I was able to come to a conclusion. Sir, when you just listened to that Mayday call alone, you suspected that the pilot was scud running, true? I had a hypothesis. I know that scud running is unfortunately common, especially in the modern day, and so I had my hypothesis, but I needed to review all the evidence before I made a conclusion. Uh, sir, you use the word hypothesis. I'm using a different word, suspected. Would you disagree with the word that you suspected that the pilot was scud running when you listened to the mayday call? No, I had my suspicions, but before making a concrete conclusion, I had to review all evidence with a fresh mental set. Well, you say that you wanted to review all the evidence with a fresh mental set, but before reviewing a single piece of evidence, you reached out to help the plaintiff, isn't that true? Uh, I reached out because I was aware that aviation safety was related to this case, and I do have a- So I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm not asking you why you reached out to the plaintiff. I'm simply asking you that without reviewing a single piece of evidence, you did reach out to the plaintiff, yes or no? Correct. Sir, let's talk about some other evidence for other possible causes of crashes. Now you know that some crashes are caused by mechanical failure, true? It's certainly possible. In fact, you know that 20% of air, airplane crashes are caused by mechanical failure, right? In general, although crashes are a case-by-case -case basis. That's one in every five crashes that's caused by mechanical failure. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, to hearsay, may I be heard? No, go ahead, continue. Yeah. Sir, you also know that 26% of crashes are caused by maintenance issues, true? That's true, yes. That's one in every four crashes that's caused by maintenance issues, true? Correct. 46% of crashes then are caused by maintenance issues or mechanical fail, true? Again, every crash is a case-by-case -case basis. I want to talk about the conclusion that you just made before the members of the jury about scud running. Let's set up this problem first. You, you define scud running as when the cloud floor lowers and so the pilot's altitude lowers as well, true? That's correct, yes. And let's take a look at the evidence. After the original ascent, the plane ascended to around 850 feet, true? Correct, yes. As indicated on this chart, the clouds are at 2,000 feet? Correct, yes. So at this point, there's no scud running. There's 1,000 feet of space there, right? Yes, that's enough space. So you would claim that there's scud running after the clouds lowered at 8.19 p.m., true? Yes, the clouds lowered, and then Mr. Campbell made the decision to lower his plane. Well, you say Mr. Campbell made that decision, 
Did you make that decision at 819, sir? Um, I'm not specifically aware of that, no. I don't know when he made his decision. I do know that the plane lowered an altitude shortly after. Shortly after, sir? He didn't lower an altitude until 13 minutes after the cloud floor lowered, true? I was not aware of his decision-making process. Well, that plane didn't lower until 13 minutes after the cloud lowered, isn't that true? That's correct. So actually, the plane was at the same level as the clouds for 13 minutes before Mr. Campbell descended, true? Correct. Unfortunately so, as that is incredibly dangerous to fly in those conditions with his licensing. Sir, he descended again at 8.37 p.m., true? Correct. He descended again at 8.41 p.m., true? Correct. 841, that's the only time after he went into an unsafe altitude, under 500 feet, true? Um, an unsafe altitude, I would say, is any altitude to be flying in these conditions. Well, sir, according to professional standards, unsafe altitude is 500 feet, isn't that true? Uh, that is correct, although there are other factors that play into unsafe flying. The Mayday call was made then at 8.42 p.m.? Correct. And he crashed at 8.43 p.m., true? That is right. Sir, at this point, you don't have any other reason to believe that the clouds descended with him, true? Uh, the clouds did not have to descend with him at that point. It's the clouds descending to his elevation that caused him to then lower his altitude. That's well, scud running. Well, at the very end, you say that he was at 450 feet, true? Correct. To the best of your knowledge, the clouds were still at 900 feet, true? Correct. Thank you, Dr. Sevchenko. We've got nothing further. Redirect? No redirect, we just ask that this witness be allowed to leave the stand.